Hey everyone, welcome to day 213 of our Bible in a Year Plus podcast. Uh, today we're going to be looking at Isaiah 30 through 33 about people who don't take God's advice. Uh, maybe you're familiar with the New Age pagan trends among celebrities and social media influencers along the lines of manifesting, as it's called, or the law of attraction. This is where you tell the universe what you want and it gives it to you. You focus your thoughts positively, not negatively, on the spirit God of the universe and you visualize it and meditate on it throughout the day and eventually the universe gives you what you are asking for. Uh, one Christian's woman was really captured with this idea, and here's what she wrote. When I say that I'm the last person who would learn about manifestation, I mean it. I was so locked up in my evangelical Christian box that I would never consider how God could actually create with me. I am the creator of the life I want. I've manifested a, th a thriving private practice, two trips to Hawaii, and a group of friends that are like family. Expand your own thoughts to believe that what you want in life is possible. I still love Jesus. I just also love other things too. Now I feel free to be me. Phew, I might have to do another post on deconstructing at a later date. <laughs> like, oh no, there's so many problems with that, layers of problems with that, right? But today, sometimes we are tempted to go and talk to other people and get advice, and we will not listen to the advice of the Lord. That was the problem in Isaiah's day. And we pick up Isaiah chapter 30, verse 1, in the King James Version of the Bible, with updated vocabulary. Woe to the rebellious children, declares the Lord, that take counsel, but not from me and that cover with a covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin, that walk down into Egypt and have not asked at my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. Therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame, and the trust in the shadow of Egypt shall be your confusion. For his princes were at Zoan, and his ambassadors came to Hannes. Uh, they were all ashamed of a people that could not profit them, nor be a help or profit, but a shame and also a reproach. The burden of the beasts of the south into the land of trouble and anguish, from which comes the young and old lion, the viper and fiery flying serpent. They will carry their riches upon the shoulders of their young burrows and their treasures upon the bunches of camels, to a people that shall not profit them. For the Egyptians shall help in vain and to no purpose. Therefore I have cried concerning this, their strength is to sit still. Now go, write it before them in a table, and note it in a book, that it may be for the time to come forever and ever, that this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord which say to the seers, do not see, and to the prophets, do not prophesy unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceits. Get out of the way, turn aside out of the path, cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. Therefore, thus declares the Holy One of Israel, because you despise this word and trust in oppression and perverseness and rely on it. Therefore, this iniquity shall be to you as a gap ready to fall, swelling out in a high wall, whose breaking comes suddenly at an instant. And he shall break it as the breaking of the potter's vessel that is broken in pieces he shall not spare, so that there shall not be found in the bursting of it a shard to take fire from the hearth or to take water at all out of the pit. For thus declares the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest you shall be saved, in quietness and confidence shall be your strength, and you would not. But you said, No, we will flee upon horses, therefore you shall flee, and we will ride upon the swift, therefore shall they that pursue you be swift. One thousand shall flee at the rebuke of one, and at the rebuke of five you shall flee till you are left as a signpost upon the top of a mountain, as a banner on a hill. And therefore the Lord will wait, uh, that he may be gracious to you, and therefore he will be exalted, that he may have mercy upon you. For the Lord is a God of judgment. Blessed are all those who wait for him. For the people shall dwell in Zion at Jerusalem. You shall weep no more. He will be very gracious to you at the voice of your cry. When he shall hear it, he will answer you. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet shall not your teachers be removed into a corner any more. But your eyes shall see your teachers, and your ears shall hear a word behind you, saying, This is the way, walk in it. 
when you turn to the right hand or when you turn to the left. You shall defile also the covering of your engraved images of silver and the ornament of your melted images of gold. You shall cast them away as a menstruous cloth. You shall say to it, get out from here. Then shall you then shall he give the rain of your seed that you shall sow the ground uh, with it and bread of the increase of the earth and it shall be fat and plenteous and that day shall your cattle feed in large pastures the oxen likewise and the young burrows that work the ground shall eat clean feed which has been winnowed with the shovel and with the fan and there shall be upon every high mountain upon every high hill rivers and streams of water in the day of the great slaughter when the towers fall Moreover, the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun, and the light of the sun shall be sevenfold as the light of seven days in the day that the Lord binds up the gap of his people and heals the stroke of their wound. See, the name of the Lord comes from fire, burning with his anger, and the burden thereof is heavy. His lips are full of indignation, his tongue as a devouring fire, and his breath as an overflowing stream shall reach to the midst of the neck to sift the nations with the sieve of vanity, and there shall be a bridle in the jaws of the people, causing them to err. You shall have a song as in the night when a holy solemnity is kept and gladness of heart as when one goes with a pipe to come into the mountain of the Lord to the mighty one of Israel. And the Lord shall cause his glorious voice to be heard and shall show the lighting down of his arm and the indignation of his anger and with the flame of a devouring fire and scattering and tempest and hailstones. For through the voice of the Lord shall the Assyrian be beaten down who smote with a rod and in every place where the landed staff shall pass, which the Lord shall lay upon him, it shall be with tambourines and harps, and in battles of shaking he will fight with it. For Tophet is ordained of old, yes, for the king it is prepared, he has made it deep and large, the pile of it is fire and much wood, the breath of the Lord, like a stream of brimstone, does kindle it. Chapter 31 Woe to those who go down to Egypt for help and rely on horses and trust in chariots because they are many and in horsemen because they are very strong, but they do not look to the Holy One of Israel, neither seek the Lord. Yet he also is wise and will bring evil and will not call back his words, but will arise against the house of the evildoers and against the help of those who work iniquity. Now the Egyptians are men and not God, and their horses flesh and not spirit. When the Lord shall stretch out his hand, both he who helps shall fall, and he who is helped shall fall down, and they all shall fall together. For thus has the Lord spoken to me, as the lion and the young lion roaring on his plain, uh, pray when a multitude of shepherds is called forth against him. He will not be afraid of their voice, nor abase himself for the noise of them. So shall the Lord of hosts come down to fight for Mount Zion and for the hill of it. As birds flying, so will the Lord of hosts defend Jerusalem. Defending also he will deliver it, and passing over he will preserve it. Turn to him from whom the children of Israel have deeply revolted. For in that day... Every man shall cast away his idols of silver and his idols of gold, which your hands have made unto you for a sin. Then shall the Assyrian fall with the sword, not of a mighty man, and the sword, not of a common man, shall devour him. But he shall flee from the sword, and his young men shall be captured. And he shall pass over to his stronghold for fear, and his princes shall be afraid of the banner, says the Lord, whose fire is in Zion and his furnace in Jerusalem. Chapter 32. Observe, a king shall reign in righteousness, and princes shall rule in judgment. And a man shall be as a hiding place from the wind, a cover from the tempest, as rivers of water in a dry place, as the shade of a great rock in a weary land. And the eyes of them that see shall not be dim, and the ears of them that hear shall listen. The heart also of the rash shall understand knowledge, and the tongue of the stammerers shall be ready to speak plainly. The vile person shall be no more called generous, nor the fool said to be bountiful. For the vile person will speak villainy, and his heart will work iniquity to practice hypocrisy and to utter error against the Lord, to make empty the soul of the hungry, and he will cause the drink of the thirsty to fail. The instruments also of the fool are evil. He devises wicked schemes to destroy the poor with lying words, even when the needy speaks right. But the generous devises generous things, 
and by generous things he shall stand. Rise up, women that are at ease, hear my voice, you careless daughters, give ear to my speech. Many days and years you shall be troubled, careless women, for the vintage shall fail, the gathering shall not come. Tremble, women that are at ease, be troubled, you careless ones, strip yourselves and make yourselves bare, and wrap sackcloth upon your loins. They shall lament for the breasts, for the pleasant fields, for the fruitful vine. Upon the land of my people shall come up thorns and briars, yes, upon all the houses of joy in the joyous city, because the palaces shall be forsaken, the multitude of the city shall be left, the forts and towers shall be for dens and uh, forever, uh, a joy of wild burrows, a pasture of flocks, until the Spirit uh, be poured upon us from on high, and the wilderness as a fruitful field, and the fruitful field be counted for a forest. Then judgment shall dwell in the wilderness, and righteousness remain in the fruitful field, and the work of righteousness shall be peace, and the effect of righteousness, quietness, and assurance forever. And my people shall dwell in a peaceable habitation, and in sure dwellings, and in a quiet resting place. When it shall hail, coming down on the forest, and the city shall be low in a low place, blessed are you who sow beside all waters, who send forth there the feet of the ox and the burrow. Chapter 33. Woe to you who spoiled, and was not spoiled, and deal treacherously, and they did not deal treacherously with you. When you shall cease to plunder, you shall be plundered. When you shall make an end to dealing treacherously, they shall deal treacherously with you. O Lord, be gracious to us. We have waited for you. Be their arm every morning, our salvation also in the time of trouble. At the noise of the tumult, the people fled. At the lifting up of yourself, the nations were scattered. At your plunder, they shall gather like the gathering of the caterpillar, as the running to and fro of locusts, he shall run upon them. The Lord is exalted, for he dwells on high. He has filled Zion with judgment and righteousness. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of your times, and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. See, their valiant ones shall cry outside. The ambassadors of peace shall weep bitterly. The highway, highways lie waste. The traveling man ceases. He has broken the covenant. He has despised the cities. He regards no man. The earth mourns and languishes. Lebanon is ashamed and cut down. Sharon is like a wilderness, and Bashan and Carmel shake off their fruits. Now I will rise, declares the Lord. Now I will be exalted. Now I will lift up myself. You shall conceive chaff. You shall bring forth stubble. Your breath as fire shall devour you. And the people shall be as the burnings of lime. As thorns cut up, they shall be burned in the fire. Hear, you who are far off what I have done, and you that are near, acknowledge my might. The sinners in Zion are afraid. Fearfulness has surprised the hypocrites. Who among us shall dwell with the devouring fire? Who among us shall dwell with everlasting burnings? He that walks uprightly and speaks uprightly. He that despises the gain of oppressions and shakes off his hands from holding of bribes, that stops his ears from hearing of blood and shuts his eyes from seeing evil, he shall dwell on high. His place of defense shall be in the fortress of rocks. Bread shall be given to him. His water shall be sure. Your eyes shall see the king in his beauty. They shall behold the land that is very far off. Your heart shall meditate terror. Where is the scribe? Where is the collector? Where is he who counts the towers? You shall not see a fierce people, a people of a deeper speech than you can perceive, of a stammering tongue that you cannot understand. Look upon Zion, the city of our solemnities. Your eyes shall see Jerusalem, a quiet habitation, a tabernacle that shall not be taken down. Not one of the stakes of it shall be ever removed, neither shall any of the cords of it be broken. But there the glorious Lord will be unto us a place of broad rivers and streams, in which shall go no galley with oars, neither shall gallant ship pass thereby. For the Lord is our judge, the Lord is our lawgiver, the Lord is our king, he will save us. Your tacklings are released, they could not well strengthen their mast, they could not spread the sail. Then is the prey of a great plunder divided, the lame take the prey. And the inhabitant shall not say, I am sick. The people that dwell in it shall be forgiven their iniquity. And that concludes chapter 33 of Isaiah.
So we start out in chapter 30, verse 1, with this idea of taking counsel from people, but not taking counsel from God. And this is such a big mistake, right? Our uh, counselors in the world are sometimes going to tell us things that are in stark contrast to what God tells us. So God tells the people, uh, rebellious children, you take counsel, but not from me. And that's a big problem. Our life coaches tell us that um, you're not sinning, you're just broken. Or that's not evil, that's good. Or oppositely, uh, that's not good, that's evil. And they're disagreeing with God. They're saying you should think more highly of yourself and you should have more confidence in yourself. But you should have confidence in God, not in yourself. Uh, They say always follow your heart. But that's terrible advice. You should always follow the Lord. They say take more me time. But most often we should take more time to love and nurture others. They say that you should always be thinking positively and manifesting your dream with the law of attraction. But that's not true. You should be talking to the Lord and you should be finding out what the Lord wishes for your life. Uh, they say that you should set a boundary uh, and, and avoid anybody who, who doesn't please you. Just stay away from those people. But that's a terrible bit of advice. You're supposed to take care of everybody. Love everybody in your world. They say that uh, you, you should blame other people. You're a victim and it's uh, another person's fault for the choices you've made in life. And you're not owning your own choices in life. All this, the Lord says, yes, you've been listening to counselors, but you're not listening to my counsel. And of course, that's a huge mistake. In chapter 30, verse 6, we have reference to the fiery flying serpent. And again, I refer you to episode 171, where we talk about these exotic animals. And just remind you that in Isaiah 14, we were talking about an earthly king who is like a fiery flying serpent because he is empowered by, influenced by, and inspired by demonic forces. And here in chapter 30, verse 6, we're talking about the fiery flying serpents as if they were in the normal wilderness with other normal wilderness animals. But here the idea, again, is very sinister and demonic. And the idea here is that when you're in the wilderness of those pagan countries, There's a lot more than one kind of serpent you have to be afraid of. There is the demonic element, the demonic spirits that are everywhere. And just as a reminder that in Egypt, for example, they worshipped the winged cobra. Uh, So obviously a demonic serpent spirit. And it's as if to say, yeah, when you go down by Egypt, there's more than one kind of serpent you have to be afraid of. And that's the idea here in Isaiah. So burning fiery serpents are um, indicators of demonic activity. All right, chapter 30, verse 8. Now, this is so good. Uh, The Lord tells Isaiah, go and write your message. Go and write it before them in a table and note it in a book that it may be for the time to come forever and ever. So it, it was important to the Lord that Isaiah's message be written down in a book so that we would have it forever and ever. And that's why we have the book of Isaiah today. And the book of Isaiah today is not corrupted. It is very accurate to what Isaiah wrote in 700 BC. And it was done this way so that we would have it forever and ever. That's the wonderful preservation of God's word. It hasn't gone away. And we'll say more about that as time goes by in other episodes. In chapter 30, verse 10. It says that the people of the Israelite nation are telling the seers and the prophets to be quiet. They say, seers, don't see. And they say to the prophets, don't prophesy to us right things. Speak unto us smooth things. Prophesy lies. That is so interesting. Because the great temptation is when your loved ones say, listen, I don't want to talk to you about the truth of God, you might be tempted to compromise truth. They're going to say, tell us smooth things. Tell us things that make us feel good. And you can't do that. You have to tell the truth. That's what it means to be an ambassador for Christ. You have to tell the truth. In chapter 30, verse 15, here we have uh, the Lord telling his people the secret to rest and peace and tranquility. And here it is. He says, thus declares the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest you shall be saved. In quietness and in confidence shall be your strength. You have to trust me. Don't run down to Egypt and ask for their help. They can't help you. You have to trust me. Return to me and trust me in quietness and confidence will be your strength. And then what did the people say? They said, no, we will flee on horses. So don't go to Egypt. Don't trust your, your own schemes. 
They say, yeah, well, we're going to. And because of that, they did not have the peace, the rest, the quietness, the confidence. They didn't have it. And because they wouldn't listen to the Lord, they brought upon themselves so many hardships. In chapter 30, verse 33, did you see we have the mention of Tophet? Tophet is in the Valley of Hinnom. Remember the South Valley, south of Jerusalem. And in a little while, um, you know, we are now in the time of uh, Isaiah in the 700s. We have to get to the uh, earlier 600s. And we're going to find that Josiah, good King Josiah, destroys that place because that's where idol worship was going on, infant sacrifices, uh, putting their babies in the arms of Molech, a statue of Molech who had a fire in his belly, and the baby would slide down the arms and get into the fire in the belly of the idol, and then they would die. Josiah, the great reformer, the good king, decided that that place was so awful, was so corrupted, they're going to turn it into a trash dump. And this is what Isaiah is prophesying. He says the king is going to come and burn that whole place down. There's going to be constant fires in a trash dump. And the Lord says, it's my anger that kindles those trash fires. So that's a dumpster fire that God started. Chapter 32, verse 1 talks about Messiah as king, and it talks about his peace when it comes, and it's so beautiful, right? Chapter 32, verse 1, Behold, a king shall reign in righteousness, in verse 2, and a man shall be as a hiding place from the wind and a cover from the storm. That's messianic. The Lord is going to be our hiding place from the wind, a cover from the storm. And verse 17 says, And the work of righteousness, when he comes, the king who reigns in righteousness, says, And the work of righteousness shall be peace. And the effect of righteousness, quietness and assurance forever. Beautiful messianic text. And we just love that again with an end times application, right? Because the king is going to come. He'll reign in righteousness for a thousand years on planet earth. And we'll finally have quietness and assurance forever. In chapter 33, verses 14 and 15, we have that question and answer that is just so colorful. The question is, who among us will be able to live with this devouring fire? of the righteousness of God. Who among us shall dwell in everlasting burnings? Who could possibly withstand all of this? That's the question. And the answer is, he who walks righteously. He shall dwell on high. Your eyes shall see the king in his beauty. And that's so great because it shows the, the burning anger of God. Well, who can do this? And the answer is, well, if you live righteously, you can do it. Remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were in a burning fire. It didn't hurt them at all. So the question is, who can do this? Oh, well, the righteous person can live right next to the God who is a consuming fire, and he never gets hurt. It's just like Niagara Falls and Grand Canyon, right? If you are in a right position with the uh, falls <clears throat> or the canyon, it's just lovely. In the wrong position, it's terrifying. Who can live with a terrifying God? Well, we can. If we live righteously, it's, it's wonderful. It's lovely. It's exactly where we want to be. Chapter 33, verse 22. The Lord is our judge. That's what the text says. The Lord is our judge. The Lord is our lawgiver. The Lord is our king. Just as a little interesting thing on the side, James Madison read that verse, Isaiah 33, 30, uh, 22, and it was the source of his idea for the separation of powers in government. The Lord is our judge. That's the Supreme Court who tells if a um, law that's passed is constitutional. The Lord is our judge. The Lord is our lawgiver. Lawgiver, that's Congress. Congress makes laws, the giver of laws, and then the Supreme Court has to say, yes, that is constitutional. So the Lord is our lawgiver and the Lord is our king. Well, that's like the executive branch, the president. And the idea in James Madison's mind was that uh, we could take these three divisions that we find in Isaiah 33, 22, and use those as the divisions of our federal government to keep any one person or group of people from having tyrannical power. And so, once again, our Bible has helped our nation at its best. All right, we have to pick one life lesson right from all that we've studied today. I'd like to go back to chapter 30, verse 1, which is where we started about seeking advice, but not taking God's advice. Seeking the advice of pop psychology and Eastern religion, they take counsel, God says, but not from me. Here's the deal. To feel good, you have to do good. Are you following the Lord well? Uh, what he says about admitting your sin and declaring war on your sin. Are you doing that? About loving others instead of trampling them. Are you doing that? About listening to him over listening to your heart. 
Are you doing that? About taking ownership for the choices you've made in life and not blaming others. Are you doing that? If you want to feel good, you have to do good. And sometimes what the Lord says is exactly contrary to what you're hearing in pop psychology and Eastern religion. So that should be our prayer today, I think, that we will listen today to God's advice about sin and foolishness and forgiveness and nurturing people, not trampling them, and admitting and owning our foolish choices, not blaming others. So I hope you'll pray in your heart as I pray out loud and commit these things to the Lord, okay? Father God, today we are committing to listen to you, to listen to your advice, more than the advice of anybody else. And Lord, we want to hear you when you talk to us about sin and forgiveness and loving others and not trampling over them and being a person of integrity at every step along the way and listening to you and not blaming others when we've made bad choices. I pray that we'll have the moral courage to do this as we intend to listen to you as our counselor and advisor today and always, and we pray it in Jesus' name, amen. Well, okay, God bless you. Thank you for joining me for day 213 in our Bible in a Year Plus podcast, and I sure hope I get to see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye for now.